And the last formal question, the last part of this, you've got your note cards. People, you've been writing down questions? Start writing down questions. Got that? This is an important one because I think that's important to all these successful people on the podium out there and what you're going to be, to be many of you younger people. Who was the most influential mentor in your career and why? Steve. Um, kind of two, one person and then a, and a group of people. The individual, I was very fortunate in my second job a year out of school to work for a fairly young supervisor and I, I'm not sure he should have or, or what he was thinking, but he gave me a lot of rope and he gave me a lot of responsibility and really challenged me. And that did wonders for me as a very young engineer figuring out that um, there were a lot of things that, that I could do and we as a team and as a group could do and uh, I still think very positively and fondly about him um, in that regard. The second thing I'll, I'll mention, and, and I bet some of these guys will talk about some of the same kinds of folks. Um, when I was working at ARCO and got involved in some of the large projects in Alaska, I was fortunate to work with some really top-notch engineers and, top and scientists who had uh, incredible depth and understanding of their craft, and, and I could name several, but. Uh, certainly uh, very much impacted my career in a positive way in terms of the value of technology. Jose. You know, there are so many people that really uh, <clears throat> influenced my life. The first one, when I went to University of Texas, Austin, the director of recreation sports, who was an you know, ex-football coach, he really, you know, changed my life because he was loving, he was caring. So, you know, here it is, that's one. Now I'm gonna to go to scientists. Uh, the chairman of the department at the University of Texas Austin was Carl Gatlin. Uh, you know, it's been a long, long time since I graduated. I never forget him. <clears throat> he was so kind. I remember, I, uh, I wrote my thesis, we did it on electronic typewriters and, you know, and we copied them with carbon, you know, carbon paper and things like that. You all, none <laughs> no of, not very many of you know what you're talking about, right? Nobody knows. So my thesis about. is written by hand, right, basically. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I never asked for money. They would come to me and they say, we've got a job for you. He was a farmer student. He would come to me and say, you're going to be paid as an engineer to do your graduate work. And my God, I said, I never asked for it. And when I graduated, you know, I said, I went to the department and I said, I don't have enough money to pay for all these secretaries to put these things together. He took his check out, he wrote a check for $300 and he handed it to me. $300 there, you know, to me it's perhaps about $3,000 today. So that I can, you f finish up the write-up. I had to already defend it and everything else. You know, this is the type of a man these people were, and he was. And other one who was my supervisor, Frank Jessen, a physical chemist, he worked for Exxon Mobil, had some for Exxon or, or you know, uh, incredible person. He, 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 he was a veteran of the Second World War. Uh, but, you know, I, I've got a couple of more people that I want to talk to. Dan Adamson. Don Adamson, who was executive director of SBE, he was my age. I played tennis with him when I was very young. He got a liking to me, so I stopped publishing, and he pushed me as hard as he could. He was a very hard working person with a tremendous amount of dignity. Don Adamson just passed away. I love him dearly. Another person, he's just like my father, Fred Potter. And I'm not a person, Ronald Reed. <clears throat> and he was very much involved in true science of sulfactyl flooding. I'm sure Harry Sorkin knows about that. Thank you. Uh, 
I'm a quick learner. Harry, you're next. Well, like I said earlier, I got out of, got my degree in 1953 from Penn State. And I guess I have to look at a number of the petroleum engineers or the technical people that worked, started working earlier than I did at uh, Marathon. And most of them had the experience of the Second World War. So I would have to say all of those guys who were really very mature, and uh, I looked up to them and, and really learned a lot from them. John. There were a lot of people at, at Amico that I learned a lot from in a technical sense. There were some really bright people there. They were very kind, generous people, easy to be around. And I learned a lot from them. Probably, though, the biggest mentors in my life occurred at about the same time in the, the oil collapse in the 80s and times were tough. And I started riding a bicycle with a couple of guys named Bud and Willard. Yeah, these crazy bicycle guys, Bud and Willard, they taught me three things. One of them, the first one, is that it's up to you. It's up to me. If you're going to go out there and ride the bike, it's up to you. You've got to have the body, you've got to have the mind, you've got to have the soul. It's up to you to have the bicycle. In our case, it's your career. You've got to look after your bike, you've got to look after your career. It's up to you. The second thing was expect the unexpected. These guys were twice my age, and they'd go down the hills twice as fast, up the hills, around the corner. They were crazy. They expected the unexpected. That's what we have to do in today's world. The third and final thing they taught me was watch out for other guys on the road. We all have flat tires. We all have problems with our bikes. Take time. Help the other riders out there. Let's take one more time to thank the Golden Legends. I know I'm inspired even by the younger one up here. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>